Hi, my name's Mike Keenan. Look, I've, I've got another interesting video today with some really useful information, hopefully useful information for you. The the uh, the message today, the the message I'm going to speak about is precursors, forewarnings, early warnings of what, what will soon come. Look, the word watchman has been greatly cheapened in the modern age. Today, if you hear the word watchman, you think about um, speculative videos, entertainment, you know, things that um, don't define what a, a true watchman is in the Bible. A true watchman in the Bible uh, watches out for the souls of men, warns of impending danger. And um, if you want to call this, you know, a watchman video, you know, fine. It's not a speculative video. It's um, precursors. It's serious stuff. This is really serious stuff. This is eternal life and eternal death. So let's start. Basically, I saw a video today and it, it just triggered a memory for me. So basically, the video is put out by uh, a channel on YouTube called Australians, Australians versus the Agenda. The title of the video is um, the three CEOs of Australia's largest mainstream media organisations want social media to be banned. I'm not going to show the video, but I'll leave a link in the description box below, as well as all the articles that I'm referencing. The links will all be there so you can view them all for yourself. Basically, what the video is referencing is a, um, I assume it's a, a, a Senate um, estimates meeting or set some type of Senate meeting to um, hear you know, thoughts about the upcoming um, misinformation and disinformation bill that's about to hit uh, Australian Parliament very shortly. A lot of bills have been uh, rushed through lately without, with little debate. Uh, such bills as the um, Digital Identification Bill went, went through just recently with virtually no debate. It just went through. So things are getting to the interesting stage because um, the... The thoughts of the people or the the will of the people is no longer being um, looked at. It's just jamming things through. Everyone's on remote control towards uh, the soon coming tribulation, which is why I'm going to read this, the first Bible verse for this video. This is Revelation uh, 17, verse 13 of the King James Bible. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. So you can see all the people lately, government, uh, officials, all these people are of one mind. They're just heading straight towards tribulation and they're just on a remote control, on a remote control. Okay, so the digital, uh, the uh, misinformation and um, disinformation bill, I'm just going to read a bit of background information. This first article is from the Australian, an Australian government um, department website, the Department of Infrastructure, Transport, Regional Development, Communication, Communications and the Arts. The article title is uh, New ACMA Powers to Combat Misinformation and Disinformation. The section I'm interested in is the, uh, the section labelled the issue. And it reads, uh, misinformation and dis disinformation pose a threat to the safety and wellbeing of Australians, as well as to our democracy, society and economy. In January 2023, the Minister for Communications announced that the Australian Government would introduce new laws to provide the independent regulator, the Australian Communications and Media Authority, ACMA, with new powers to combat online misinformation and disinformation. The new powers will enable ACMA to monitor efforts and require digital platforms to do more, placing Australia at the, at the forefront in tackling harmful online misinformation and disinformation while balancing freedom of speech. Next, I'm just going to uh, read a um, PDF document from uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers, just um, give you a little bit of information about some of the penalties that um, will possibly be in this bill once it goes through. So the heading is uh, penalties. The bill provides significant penalties for digital platforms of individuals that do not comply with the bill and new codes and standards created. Some penalties include imprisonment of up to 12 months for providing false or misleading information to ACMA, maximum penalty of non-compliance with a registered code of 10,000 penalty units which equates to $2.75 million or 2% of global turnover, whatever is greater. And maximum penalty for non-compliance with an industry standard of 25,000 penalty units, which equates to $6.88 million or 5% of global turnover, whatever is greater. Next, I'm going to just read a, um, a quote 
or uh, Sky, News Australia, Sky News Australia website, a quote by, by a, uh, a political commentator, Andrew Bolt. Here's the quote. Bolt explained he was shocked reading through the proposal, pointing out that the while the bill would target everything from blogs, podcasts, and people posting on Twitter, state and federal governments would be exempted. There are exemptions in the bill for uh, three main classes. Obviously, state and federal governments are, are exempt. Uh, mainstream approved, government approved news organisations are exempt and universities are exempt because uh, universities seem to be providing uh, fact-checked information. So basically these three groups of people or entities, these three, three entities, will be the arbiters of all truth. Anything outside of this will be can be classified as misinformation or disinformation if so be judged and the penalties as mentioned previously will apply. Individuals and corporations, so it's uh, something to look forward to. Um, Next, we see at the, at the current time that the world is going right, right wing. The elections, current elections in, of Europe, the elections just took part in Europe, place in Europe, uh, went right. America's about to go right. Australia is currently um, left wing across virtually every, you know, state, territory, and federal government, and federal government, and we'll be getting lurching to the right as well. Now, this... Um, quote will come from uh, the Holocaust Encyclopedia. Uh, basically, it's about the Nazi party, because um, when the, the Antichrist turns up, he's going to be the ultimate right winger. So we can see what's happening in the world, and, and we'll delve a little bit more deeper into it, and you'll see what I mean. Basically, this is an introduction. The Nazi party was a, a radical far right movement and political party led by Adolf Hitler. Its formal name was the National Socialist German Workers Party. Nazi ideology was racist, nationalist, and anti-democratic. And here's the interesting piece. It was violently, violently anti-Semitic and anti-Marxist. Basically, when the Antichrist comes to power, he will be a friend of Israel. And obviously, he'll sign a, a seven-year peace covenant with Israel. And um, there will be, uh, it will be a two-state solution. There will be a Palestinian state in the state of Israel. I'll, I'll just quote a Bible verse which shows this. This is... Uh, Joel 3, uh, verse number 2, I'll read that, I'll gather. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. See, and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. This actually relates to the, uh, the judgment of the nations, which takes place at the, uh, the end of the tribulation period. So as you can see there, there will be a two-state solution as um, God judges them for, and part for party, my land, which is Israel. Okay, next. Okay, this is, again, this is a quote from the Holocaust Encyclopedia under the heading, Rise to Leadership in the German Labour Party. Related to his intelligence gathering function, Hitler and two colleagues attended the September 12, 1919 meeting of the German Labour Party. During the meeting, Hitler denounced a speech favouring Bavarian separatism. Within a month, Hitler joined the DAP with the number 555. Hitler was a, um, a type of the Antichrist, again, a precursor. His number was 555. The Antichrist will be 666. So you can see all these precursors occurring from what I've read. Next. This next part relates to the uh, the pandemic, which, which happened. Basically, during the, the pandemic, a, a lot of uh, Jewish Holocaust survivors came out and warning people, warning the world, saying these events happened, the same events, the way things were handled, were actually, actually happened during the, uh, the Nazi uh, regime. And they were out warning people. So again, this is from um, the Holocaust Encyclopedia. The title of the article was in the name of public health, Nazi racial hygiene. It reads, in democratic societies, the needs of public health sometimes require citizens to make sacrifices for the greater good. But in Nazi Germany, national public health, which was under the heading uh, Volksgesundheit, took complete precedence over individual health care. Physicians and medically trained academics, many of whom were proponents of racial hygiene or eugenics, legitimized and helped to implement Nazi policies aiming to cleanse German society of people viewed as biologic threats to the nation's health. We saw that people being viewed as biologic threats to the nation's health, uh, with people being classed as anti-vaxxers, et cetera. That's just one instance, but I'm just showing you that the precursors are there. They're, 
God always warns before he judges. So you can see what I'm saying. History is repeating because there's nothing new under the sun. Okay. Next. I'm going to go to one health, which pat the page I've actually closed down. Uh, so basically, health is something that the, the Nazi party tried to control. Obviously, that same thing's happening now. Uh, obviously, COVID was a, you know, a show, a precursor of that. Obviously, the pandemic treaty is uh, the world pandemic treaty is coming up for a vote uh, very shortly at the end of this year. Then they're going to go again if it fails in the first quarter of next year. So eventually that world pandemic treaty will, will succeed. Absolutely will succeed. Um, basically, with One Health, I'm just going to read this off the, off the World Health Organization website. What is One Health? One Health is an integrated, unifying approach to balance and optimise the health of people, animals and environment. It is particularly important to prevent, predict, detect and respond to global health threats such as the COVID-19 pandemic. Look, I highly, uh, you know, have a look for yourself at One Health. It's quite interesting. Obviously, the word one will be used everywhere. One world, you know, One Health, One Everything. Because Babel, uh, the Tower of Babel, obviously, was the uh, the uh, first try at uh, a one world government. And um, God put a stop to that. He separated, a cha he obviously changed the languages, each language and people were put into their separate nations. As a result of this, and this is where I'm heading to, that people started, because they couldn't understand each other's languages, they started using symbols to communicate to each other with. And this has carried on from then, you know, over the past, you know, 4,000 years, roughly from since the um, Tower of Babel until until today. They still use that, that, this language symbols to communicate. They're multi-layered symbols. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to just show you. I'm going to show you with uh, the World Health Organization uh, logo. I'm just going to show you exactly what it means. Look, the, the Lord showed me all this. I asked, as you can see in my testimony, I asked the Lord to uh, show me this world as it really is. And uh, he did over a period of six months. And um, this is one of the things I was shown many years ago. I'm just going to show you again, just, just to show you, like to point out how much danger the world's in. And it's just so you can be aware of the world that you live in. And I'll, and I'll share something else as well, which is simple, but it can be um, very valuable to you. Okay. Now, it's going to open all these pages up, which were closed while I was doing things. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just going to uh, put the graphic on the screen so you can see the World Health Organization, Health World Health Organization logo. And the first thing you'll notice is uh, at at the bottom, surrounding the initial symbol in the middle, you'll see a uh, a laurel, a victory laurel. It's known as a it what's a crown, and and a crown in Latin is the word corona. And we should know what the word corona means. Just a coincidence, I imagine, but. Not really. <laughs> anyway, inside you'll see the circle, and there's inside that circle there's 33 divisions, and there's a reason for these 33 divisions. It's it's actually the same logo. That part of the logo is exactly the same as um, the United Nations, because the World Health Organization is obviously are connected to the United Nations. But there's 33 divisions for for a reason. There's there's two key reasons. And I'll uh, just go to God's Word. Okay, so 33. Actually, I've some, written some notes for this because it's it's very early in the morning here. It's 1.37 in the morning and my memory is starting to fade. So in, in the Bible, there's biblical biblical numbers. The Hebrew the Hebrew letter system, for instance, and some of the Greek as well, the, the letters actually also represent numbers. And... Um, in, in Hebrew, the number 33 uh, represents a, uh, in Hebrew, a sign. And you'll see that the enemy also, because he wants to be like God, and he he tries to, um, he, well, he does, he counterfeits God. So he takes biblical numbers and takes them into the, the present evil world, and, and it's known as numerology. And he does these things because he wants to be like God, and I'll show you that from God's word. And I'll read this to you right now. This is Isaiah, Isaiah 14, verses 12 to 14. 
How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut de down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in, thy, said in thine heart, I will set into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. And here we go, verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. And he does. The, the enemy gets his opportunity to be like the most high. And that happens at the, uh, the midpoint of the uh, tribulation period. So at the halfway point, obviously, God's word, he, he goes in the temple and proclaims that he's God. And, he, and he's given that opportunity, obviously, for, for three and a half years. Uh, next, where are we going? So the 30, 33 was where I'm going from, the 33. So the 33 has a double, double application. We'll go to Revelation 12, verse number four. And, he, and his tail drew the, the third part of the stars of heaven, and he cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for, devour her, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. See, um, you know, a third is uh, 33%. So that's one application. The other application is that um, in Hebrew, the number three is, is God's number. It's the number for, for divine perfection. Obviously, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, uh, soul, body, spirit. So he does, you'll see in the occult, they do uh, as above, as below. So I'll go three, three, as above, as below. See, in the occult, everything's laid. You don't need to know about that. But all you need to know is just the, the basic meaning of the symbol, symbol which means danger, 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 danger. Okay, next. And now we get to the interesting, really interesting part. It's all interesting, but this is getting really interesting. You, you'll see the snake up a pole. In, in the Bible, a, a snake represents sin. In the world, the, this present evil world, the, the serpent represents wisdom, so-called wisdom. Anyway, let's go to God's word. Okay, uh, Numbers 21, verses 9, actually, verses 8 and 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if, the, if a servant had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. See, what what this represents in the in the Old Testament numbers is the the sin curse being lifted from the world. You'll see that in the Bible, in God's word, in, in 2 Corinthians five twenty one, we read, "For He hath made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him." See, the enemy when 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 the the Israeli people looked upon the brass serpent, they were healed. The enemy tries to counterfeit and he puts himself on a pole, you know, in a logo on the World Health Organization, and he and he heals or you know shows that he's a healer. See the imitation? It's all just a counterfeit. You know, you know, God's word's the truth. You know, and everything in God's word, you'll see a counterfeit in, in the, this present evil world because that's what who the devil is. He's a counterfeiter because he wants to be like God. And as I said, he gets his opportunity during the uh, the tribulation period. Look, that's basically what I wanted to say. Let's look at my notes just quickly. Yeah, that's basically it. Look, one other tip I'll, I'll, I'll give you, and this is an important one. The spirit behind things always reveals itself. And you'll see a key, a key symbol that is used everywhere is the pyramid. You will see that symbol used everywhere, and especially these day days in professing Christian churches. You'll see it like uh, flash up in the in the background somewhere. It can actually be in the logo, or the thirty three will be in the logo as well, built in there. Um, you need to be aware of this. If you ever see a pyramid anywhere in anything, be warned. Take warning and uh, turn away from it. If the spirit behind that church or business or whatever it may be is revealing itself to you 
Um, there's a reason for that. You know, I haven't taken notes for this, but quite simply is like you, everyone's got free choice. You now know what the symbol means. So if you freely choose to um, follow through and keep watching that church service or whatever it may be, it's 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 your fault. You knew, but you chose not to. If people knew God's word, they know that the the Israelites were brought out of Egypt. They were set free out of Egypt. And now you're, you're in Mystery Babylon and the pyramid is a, one of the symbols of Mystery Babylon. So be aware, be very aware because um, these are very dangerous times, very deceptive times. And as God's word says, but the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God for their foolishness unto him. Neither can he, can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Like most people, this will just seem like madness to them because they're natural men. You know, people who are uh, born again, the Holy Spirit, or who are seeking the truth and the Lord is convicting them will, will understand exactly what I'm saying. Look, I'll, I'll give you a bit of advice too. Don't don't delve into the, the occult. You know, these, I'm just mentioning this, you know, just to show you the imminent danger that we're in, the precursors that are happening, the danger that is happening. Look, the occult is um, very dangerous in their world. Look, I'll be honest with you. If you study evil, evil will study you. It's as simple as that. It's dangerous stuff. I very, I don't want to mention. I mentioned it a couple of times, just as a, occasionally, just as a warning, just to show you the the reality, the truth of the world that you live in. And it's a dangerous place. This world is a dangerous place, which means why this is why we always need to be in God's word. Why we always need to be in prayer. Things are getting more dangerous. I've noticed lately with myself, like um, spiritual attack. You know, it's it's becoming more frequent. The past three weeks for me have been, you know, dreadful in many ways. Good in others, dreadful in others. You know, I've learned a lot and I've been through a lot. It, it, and it's, I'm not the only one. It's happened to other people. You know, it's if you, look, if I if I was still a betting man, I'd, I, I would say that it's happening to virtually all of us, you know, because things are really heating up. Things are getting really dangerous. So um, stay close to God through the truth of his word and everything's going to be fine. Anyway, if I see something else come up that's of interest, I will um, share it with you. Look, I'm not a um, one of these guys who just talks for no reason at all. If I see something important or I've got something important to share, then I'll, I'll simply share it. And that's it. Anyway, that's all I want to say. God bless. Bye for now.